Okay, now our next video is going to be a little bit different, but it's going to be based on the script. So we already know that we have this script working and it's queuing to everybody. But now we want to integrate an auto tenant feature. So first thing that we'll have to do is we have to define with the client or our client the, the requirements. So let's say they have a, a schedule. They have they're open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then the rest of the time they are closed. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. And they are, they're also open Monday through Friday and Saturdays and Sundays they're closed. So first I want to do day of the week. And then I always like to put a label onto things so that I can understand what's my, what's my script doing and what what that piece of the script is doing. So first thing is the uh, time validation. I don't think we're going to use this tag anywhere else or we're going to call it from any other place, but we're going to use that one. Now for day of the week, we go right click on this guy and then we add weekdays and we're gonna add weekends so weekdays Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday and Sunday okay now we're gonna be closed on weekends and we're gonna be open on weekdays now we need to define the time of the day here. Now if you look, this already comes with a few things here. And I'm going to keep the rest and the other connection 1, 2, 3, and 4 I'm going to delete. So if you noticed, this one doesn't have any time. This one doesn't have any time. I'm going to leave this one because I know I'm not going to use it. And then I said that I was going to go from 9 a.m. All the way down to 5 p.m. And then the rest, well, is the rest. So connection, open business. Okay, now, what do I want this to do? So I have defined the day of the week. I know that if it's a weekday, it's going to go to the open to time of the day and it's going to go to the open business. If my call is between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. If it's either before or after that, it's going to go to a rest and then we're going to look at uh, what are we going to do with this guy. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to do is add a language validation. This is very common, in, for example, in the US and where you're calling to to an auto attendant it says for English press one for Spanish press two this is very common so we're gonna use this and we're gonna call this language if I can spell today validation okay now what are we gonna use for this one we're gonna use a menu I don't think the menus are here, so let's look for the menu. It is right here. 
Now this menu is gonna be called language validation. Another thing that you have on these steps is that you can create the labels here so you don't have to create them before. I like to create them before because it gives me a visual of what I'm doing. And then you can also add notes. A lot of people like to do different notes. For English, press one. For Spanish, press two. And then we close this. So this is gonna make it look uh, different. like that there's something that is not liking I think I know what it is let's see Unable to parse expression. Oh, okay. We need to finish this. So this is going to ask us for a prompt. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a value here. Prompt. This is what happens when you don't plan things before you start doing them. So this we're gonna change now here on the filter we're gonna add one we're gonna call this one english and then we're gonna add another one two for spanish we're gonna assign one to this one two to this one we're gonna apply so in reality, it didn't even matter if I had this or not. Because it already adds it by default. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable. And then I can do prompt. The name of the prompt, this is language validation. And I'm gonna make this guy a parameter. Now, when you make it a prompt, you can come here to these three dots and then you can select the prompt if you have it on the prompt repository. Now in this case, we don't have anything there. So what I like to do is just leave it there and just put the the prompt, the, the check mark for parameter. This is gonna give me the ability to, after I finish the script, upload the script and then upload the prompts separately. Okay, so we have our language validation and one for English, one for Spanish. So we have been leaving these things that are not defined hanging in there for now, but later I'm gonna show you what to do with those. Now it's very easy to make a script too big or make it too, too or, or make it more efficiently I've seen in some cases and actually I used to do this when when I was starting that I would just go ahead and um, and create different menus for English and Spanish but in reality you have you can just create one menu and then you can set the language for that menu before the 
the call comes in but for now we're gonna go with the English and then we're gonna go after we're gonna take a look at those things that are a little bit more advanced so I'm gonna close this and then I'm gonna create a new label and so far we haven't tied anything up we're just creating from the top to the bottom and then we're gonna start working on putting everything together so this is gonna be main menu and in the main menu I'm gonna add another menu and this is gonna be for sales this is gonna be for for sales press one What's my next department? For IT. Press two. For compliance. Press three. Of course, we need to define a prompt. We're gonna say prompt one. Still haven't defined anything yet here. Sales. ID and compliance. Sales one, IT two, compliance three. Okay, now I think we can start tying things up here. So what happens when we go with time of the day, open business and the rest? We're gonna use the go to step and then in this case I want to send the go to to the actually to the language validation and then the rest we don't have anything for the rest so let's put something real quick even though we're not gonna test it out on this video but this is just gonna forward it to 2015 okay what is the right thing to do on this guy come here make a string closed a string closed or yeah closed transfer and then we'll make this guy a parameter and now we come here we we'll use the script the string And now I call this guy closed. Okay, so open business is gonna go to the language validation and then it's gonna come here to the main menu and then it's gonna follow this logic. For number one, it's gonna go to sales, number two IT three compliance now for the rest of the time when it's not open business we're gonna send them to the closed tag or label now, language validation it's gonna keep continuing here so 
if they press one it's gonna go to english if they press two it's gonna go to spanish now if they don't press anything what do you want them to do what do you want this action to do so i'm gonna put a go to main menu <clears throat> that's if they don't put anything and then it's even if it's unsuccessful if they press something else what i can do is i can loop them back to to a language validation and the way i will loop them back is by using another go to and then it will go back to the language validation until the user uh, picks the right number so this could be useful but what I've seen is that they just use the same tag here for the unsuccessful and we're gonna do that so even if they press 9 at this stage I want them to still go to the main menu if they take too long to do it I'll still want them to go to the main menu now what do we want to do with sales so we do have a queue here correct and what happens in this queue is if the if there's nobody connected or nobody ready the call is gonna loop and loop and loop and then it's gonna still in queue so in this case, what I like doing is call this CSQ. Or sales CSQ. And we're making it very easy so that you can, so that people out there can understand if they're not uh, too experienced with UCCX. And now when they call sales, I want to send them to the sales CSQ. Now when you go a little advanced and then you start uh, thinking of saving, saving steps or saving space on your script, what you can do here is that you can create a variable, set the value when they select sales and then set the CSQ value to 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 sales and then just send the call to just send the call to to the to the queue which is I think the best practices on this guy but we're not gonna do that and we're just gonna complete this and then for IT, what we're gonna use is a call redirect. So we're gonna send this to another number, 2015. So you could use this. And what's gonna happen with compliance is that we're gonna do another call redirect. Once we start getting a little bit more deep into the configuration and a little bit more advanced, what we're going to do is we're going to create another queue and we're going to assign more agents to that queue. But for now, that's what we have so far. Hopefully, and uh, when I record some some prompts, we're going to be able to, to see this guy in action. Thank you for watching.